In this video, we're talking about ISO and aperture, which are the two most important things to getting a fantastic image. So make sure you stay to the end of the video so you learn some tips that you can do regardless of what camera you have. Hi, Ridge here, and today we're talking about ISO and aperture. It's my goal on this channel to help you master your cinematography so you can become successful and stand out on YouTube. And if this is your first time here, hit the subscribe button, the bell notification, so you're not missing any tips or tricks that we're all taking. Let's first start with aperture, because aperture is something that is a physical object. Unfortunately, most phones don't have aperture. They have a pretend aperture. But an aperture or iris is a physical device similar to your eyeball. When something's bright, you want to close it down. When something's dark, you want to open it up. And it's measured by these particular numbers. 3.5 to 5.6, which is what my lens is right now. You get some old good lenses that go to 1.8. That means they open really wide and are great for low light shooting. That means you can open them up when you're in the dark and more light will come in and your image will look brighter. Now, also keep in mind, the wider the aperture, the shallower depth of field. Let's talk a moment about what depth of field is. If you're shooting with a camera that has a lens on it, there is going to be a range in which something is in focus. And that range is called the depth of field. That is what is in focus and what isn't in focus. Your depth of field closes down when you zoom in or when you open up your aperture. For you'll see the examples on the screen right here. Ryan, just play some music through this. Okay, <clears throat> didn't know he would cut back so soon. So, you can see the wider the aperture, the shallower depth of field. And that's a good thing to know and keep in mind when shooting, especially if you're shooting action, it's better to have it closed down so it's easier to pull focus. Pulling focus means you can just keep it's keeping it in focus, that's what it means. Now we talked about in the last video not to use shutter speed to expose your video because it can change the look of your motion and if you're using artificial lighting it can make lines like you see on the screen right here so make sure i'll make sure to link that video at the end if you haven't seen it the best way to expose your shot is to use your aperture Use your aperture typically as wide as you can, unless you're shooting action, then you obviously want to close down so your depth of field and your focus plane isn't so narrow. And the second thing you want to use is ISO. What is ISO? ISO basically, in a real simple form, means the higher the number, the brighter your image will be, but the less clarity you'll have to the image and the more grain you'll introduce. Here's one at a really low native ISO that I'm shooting on which is 100 and here's what it looks like when I start boosting it way way up. If you're interested in finding out different cameras that have really good ISOs make sure you check out Lens Pro to go because they do fantastic really scientific tests on what cameras have the best ISO and I can tell you right now it's Sony. So leaving you with these two tips, make sure you use your iris on your lens or aperture and your ISO in order to create and expose your image properly. So that way it doesn't look blown out or it doesn't look underexposed. Between these two tools, you should be able to create a good quality image that people can look at and feel like they're watching a professional looking video. Now for phone shooters, you don't have a lot of control. As I mentioned in the other videos, there are custom apps that you can download allowing you to control these manually. Definitely recommend that you do so. I'm gonna leave you with this one tip. Learn to do everything manually. 
I'm not saying you always have to do it manually, but if you know how to control your camera manually, you will master your skills at cinematography and stand out on YouTube and become successful. So as I promised, I'm gonna link a video here and here. These videos will help you master your cinematography and filmmaking skills. And don't forget in the meantime, always be creating.